And welcome into our tip-off show, men's basketball focus from Mama Lucia's here in Bethesda and uh, Mike Brennan, head coach, men's basketball and the athletics director at American University, Dr. Billy Walker, joining us here. And uh, one of the big things that you got to do in the off-season was head over to Australia. First of all, have fun with that. Uh, it was a fantastic trip, yeah. I mean, the guys had a, uh, a blast, uh, the coaches, the wives, everybody. So it was a uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So uh, glad we did it. And for you, Dr. Walker, kind of putting it together and, you know, just the idea of seeing one of your teams go to Australia, that's got to be kind of cool. Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, the NCAA allows uh, teams to go every four years if, if on a foreign tour. So uh, it was great that uh, we were able to put that together for the basketball team to be able to do it because especially this year with a lot, of, a lot of freshmen coming in, it was a great trip for them to go on and, uh, you know, really um, – build that cohesiveness uh, as a team, and uh, I, I think it really will pay dividends down the road. How much did you see of that, and how much do you think that helped in the idea of the timing of going this year as opposed to going one of the other years? Yeah, no, I thought it was a great year for us to do it. Um, as great as Australia was, it was the time in Bender Arena, to be honest, that, would, that I uh, wanted and enjoyed the most. Uh, so we got to practice you know, eight or nine times before we, were, we went over, uh, and it gave the... The freshmen, you know, especially in the new guys, Larry and uh, CB, a chance to to go live, you know, just uh, play and you know do our stuff, and then for the freshmen in Australia to you know play against somebody other than their roommate. Um, so it was it was a terrific experience. Uh, the thing I liked the most was when we were over in Australia that our guys were, you know, together as a full group, you know, almost everywhere we saw them go, you know, when they were going out to eat at night or whatever it was, uh, it wasn't you know two or three guys here and there, as you know everybody everyone was together. Um, so it was, it was important in that respect. And with the intricate nature of the scheme that you run, the, the Princeton style, you know, that had to have helped just because of that, not, not just the new faces, but also the style that you run. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, just college basketball is just completely a different experience for new for freshmen especially, so just the, the intensity of the practices and the speed and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it was a, a, a really good experience for them, and, and I liked what I saw from all of them. You know, obviously, it's uh, you know you saw a lot of freshman type things, mm -hmm. but uh, there was a lot of uh, positive things that made me uh, excited about the future. And for uh, you, Dr. Walker, hiring Mike, you did it really quickly, right after you you had uh, been hired, and Coach Jebbia and Mike, you guys all kind of came in at the same time. But Mike was one of your first hires. Yeah, like we were talking about with with Megan, uh, Mike was even sooner, you know, <laughs> um, and. Uh, it, it's been great. Uh, I think it's been great for the three of us kind of to be growing together in the roles here. You know, with, uh, and same thing Meg, like Megan and I said about her staff. Mike's got a fantastic staff. They've been together. Uh, they work together really well. Um, and you can see that on campus visits when, when recruits come. You know, the comments you get back from parents and from the, and the recruits talking about how much they like the way that the, the, the staff works together and the cohesiveness of the team as well. We obviously got a gr really young team this year, so it's, it's neat to see that interaction. Uh, uh, you know, Mike and Megan both uh, within their first couple of years have been we're won a championship and we're Patriot League coaches of the year. So, uh, you know, they, they've done a fantastic job and they represent what I am proud of is they, you know, Mike uh, represents the university well. And uh, I mean, that's, you know, that's what that's what's important to all of us. And we'll dive into the young roster. We'll take a look at the schedule as we mm -hmm. continue the tip off show from Mama Lucia's in Bethesda. Welcome to our sleepy little college town. You may have heard of us. Here we stand up for causes as naturally as we sit down for classes. We believe that knowledge, understanding, and discovery will make the world a better place and that our contributions are only limited by our imaginations. Words, medals, and degrees don't make us who we are. Meaningful change does. We are American. And there's nothing we would rather be and welcome back to Mama Lucia's here in Bethesda for our tip-off show, uh, men's basketball here at American University. And, uh, Coach, you know, let's take a look at the roster. We mentioned there's a, a lot of newcomers, a lot of new faces, and one of the ones I know you're most excited about is Sam Iorio. What have you seen from him since he got onto campus? Um, Sam has had a terrific senior year. Uh, he had a great high school career, had a great AAU career, um, really knows how to play and can do a lot of different things. Uh, Mostly he goes after rebounds. In addition to his skill level, the thing I like is he goes after rebounds, plays physically, 
um, is, you know, runs back on defense, does, you know, you, you tell him once or twice to do something, and he does it right away. Uh, so I think he's, he's going to play a ton, and he's going to help us a lot, and I think he's going to be a really good player in our league. You want to put a guess as to how many minutes uh, you're gonna you're gonna? Uh, well, to be honest, as many as I can. You know, anytime you get a good player, <laughs> I mean, just like uh, Saeed and uh, Mark last year. I mean, uh, if you if you got good ga- good guys that you think are really good, you want to play them the whole game, and uh, that's you know, uh, I th- his his freshmanness will probably keep him off the court. He'll probably get into foul trouble and things like that, um, and you know, just need sort of mental breaks, but. Uh, he, he's shown a lot of resilience in practice and, he, you know, in the games in Australia. So we're going to try to get him in as many minutes as we can. You mentioned Saeed, of course, Saeed Nelson. And, you know, he was a, a state champion, much like Iorio was a state champion, an all-state player. Both of them were that. So they have some of the same pedigrees, of course, different styles, obviously. But um, when you take a look at Saeed, he had a huge impact last year. There were some hiccups, some with the shooting. Have you seen him really grow and really take that on to improve his free throw shooting and, and from beyond the arc? Yeah, no, he made huge strides. He worked really hard on his game and, and especially on his shooting. Um, you know, he was countless hours in the gym. Uh, I think he realized, you know, how just how difficult college basketball is. And, you know, I wore him out. I, I, I wore him out and, would, you know, threw him into the fire. And, you know, I thought he responded as well as any freshman could for the the amount of responsibility that we handed to him. Um, so I think he's, you know, he's definitely well aware of what, what's expected of him this year. Uh, so we're looking for, you know, for big things from him. But having said that, you know, it's uh, he's no longer, um, you know, a secret. and Everybody right. knows about him. And as good of a year as he had, you know, it's going to be, you know, a lot on his plate this year too. Um, so it's it's a, it's a, going to be a big challenge for him. So we got to make sure the you know, continues to grow and get better and uh, help him through and help him through this year too. And that's one of the biggest um, changes is going from a freshman to a sophomore, and that's one of the areas that you see players really make strides if they're going to have really successful uh, collegiate careers. Where do you see him? Where do you see Mark Gasparini in that regard as well? Yeah, well, uh, um, especially with with Saeed early on, I, I just hear him on the sidelines talking to our freshmen. And, you know, just the things that he says to them, you know, just uh, he's just pointing out little details that are important. And, you know, try, uh, we're trying to get him to obviously lead by example. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys think that being a leader is just telling everybody what to do. But the most important thing is that you're doing it yourself. Um, so that's, you know, we, or we get our, we're trying to get our older guys to, to do that first. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's good to see them sort of pointing out all these little things that uh, that they see that the freshmen need to do in order to help us win, which was encouraging to me. James Washington had some games that were really good, really focused, really big for you guys. Other games that maybe weren't so so great. Where do you see him as far as the role goes this year? Well, he's an upperclassman now. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, to all our older guys to, you know, to take on that responsibility of what it means to be an upperclassman. So, you know, regardless of minutes and points and all that kind of stuff, it's, you know, showing up on a daily basis and putting in a hard day's work. Um, I mean, one guy that's impressed me so far is uh, C.D. Diallo, transfer from Kilgore. Uh, I mean, the guy, he goes so hard. You know, it's like uh, uh, he's a million miles an hour, which sometimes on offense, it's like, whoa, slow down a little bit. But uh, but you want that type of energy and hardness. And, you know, that's what we're looking for from all of our older guys. I mean, Larry Matuzis is the same way. He, You know, he's in terrific shape. You know, he he plays hard. He goes, you know, hard in everything that he does every day, you know, throughout throughout the entire practice. So uh, we're looking for all of our older guys to do that. And Larry seems like he's going to be a really nice fit this year. Yeah, Larry can play. He's good. Uh, He can score. Uh, He can make long shots. He's confident. He's, you know, uh, we got to get him to, you know, defend and rebound and do some of that stuff. But, you know, that'll come. And, you know, he wants to get better at everything. Uh, But he's, you know, he's, he's had a really good preseason. And, you know, we're looking for, for a lot from, from Larry. I know how much you loved having Charlie Jones on the roster, just the energy he brought, the defense that he brought, the lay it all out, you know, reckless abandon, for lack of a better term, that he would play with. Who f- sort of fills that role? Do you see a guy right now that fills that role or a guy that you think can grow into that role? Right, yeah. Well, you can never replace a guy like Charlie. You know, a lot of these guys are just different and special. Um, so, you know, you just hope that some of your guys pick up some of the things that he did. Um, but you know, you, you get new guys and you just try to get them to be the best versions of themselves. So, you know, um, CB won't, you know, maybe not rebound like Charlie or play every single position, but he goes as hard as he does. Um, 
know, we got a, a freshman, uh, Nick McCarchick, who's a walk-on, who's from a basketball family. His dad was a co- college coach. His uh, grandfather was, a, you know, a terrific college coach. But you can tell he grew up in a basketball household because he's just, you know, um, mentally alert the entire time he's out there. And he reminds me of Charlie and, and his, uh, his mental approach to practice every day. I mean, he's just absolutely into everything that we're doing. And I'm never talking to Nick McCartrick. I'm talking to everyone else on the team that's going to play major minutes, and he's soaking it all up. And he's, I can see him, much like Charlie, forcing me to sort of get him in there at some point. Uh, that's got to be something. a good problem to have. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think the, the other guys are noticing it too. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they notice what, what he sees, what he does, how hard he goes. So other guys may be more talented than him, but they see, oh, wow, I, I, I better play just as hard as him too. Now, another one of the youngsters you have is Jesse Little. You got him late. What has he done since he's gotten to campus? How has he opened your eyes? Uh, Jesse's been terrific so far. Um, I mean, he was sort of an unknown. You know, he played down in Mississippi, and he was just playing against a bunch of big football players that were beating him up, you know, constantly throughout the whole season. Um, and it's, you know, it served him well because the physical contact doesn't bother him. He's a, sl- a real slight kid, but he gets knocked around. He gets knocked around a lot, and it doesn't affect him. It doesn't affect his effort. Um, so and and he he can do a lot more than I think he did in high school and in AAU. He's got you know good skill level and good feel for the game and you know just plays hard. So he he's been a you know a terrific uh, bright spot for us and you know he he's gonna play. He's gonna play. Now as we take a look at the schedule, of course a couple of the ones that really pop out at K State, at West Virginia, at Marquette are a couple of the big ones. And uh, opening up the season against K State, that's a huge one. And then going to West Virginia, playing, you know, Press Virginia, and Javon Carter going up against in a way, you know, with Saeed. How do you think and what do you think Saeed can get out of that? Uh, those games definitely uh, pop out at me <laughs> in, a, in a different way. Um, but I think, uh, you know, one, we got to have, you know, make sure Saeed knows that it's a not a mano a mano match between him and, you know, he's got to, you know, be the player that he is and do the things that he needs to do to keep us in the game, you know, which is, you know, make every, have everybody help him and help us. Um, so I think, you know, his role is different than, you know, uh, another person on another team. Uh, and I think he understands that. Um, so he's going to have to do that in every game. Uh, so we're, you know, at this point, I'm more worried about us. Um, I guess, you know, I, I always heard coaches say that. Now I know, <laughs> you know, sort of what it means. Um, I'm more worried about us growing. And, you know, obviously we're going to prepare for each opponent and, you know, try to get ready for what they do specifically. But we, we got to make sure that we're looking sort of long term and making sure that we continue to grow and get better at the things that we need to, to get better at. Um, and it's, you know, playing as, you know, as many of these freshmen as I can. Uh, Because I think they could all help us at some point. Now, when you look at the TV schedule that you guys have, you have the game at Marquette, which is going to be on FS1. You have the game against Holy Cross, which is on CBS Sports Network. A couple games are going to be on NBC Washington as well. So you get TV exposure, you get some national TV exposure. What does that do for the program and for recruiting in the big picture? Yeah, it's always great for recruiting, obviously, uh, to have games like that on your schedule. Uh, You know, everybody, every recruit and every kid on every team wants to play against the best and play in these big arenas against the best you know, top 25 teams and that kind of thing. So it's a, it's definitely a, an exciting atmosphere and a, an amazing challenge. Uh, I think for a lot of teams like, you know, American, you know, teams like us, it's, you know, you're, you're a completely different team in the beginning of the season than you are at the end of the season. Uh, so it's interesting to see how you perform against these teams in the beginning of the season. Um, and then hopefully you grow, and hopefully you're playing against one of them at the end of the season. How about the game that's a uh, home game spotlight January 20th against Lafayette, a chance to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the first AU Hoops team that went to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, no, it's a, it's an amazing accomplishment. You know, Jeff uh, Jones, the head coach of that team, I mean, it was just a special group. Uh, I know that they all, you know, um, still communicate, and they're a very tight-knit group, and for good reasons, because it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to win. It's hard to get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, for them to do it, you know, for the first time in the school's history and to do it back-to-back is a terrific and amazing accomplishment, and I'm looking forward to You know, I, I was lucky enough to be an assistant on staff then, 
And uh, it was a great group of uh, guys, and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of them. Hopefully, uh, I, th I think a, a lot of them will be, will be there at the event. We're all looking forward to that, and we're all looking forward to the uh, season getting underway here in just a few days. Coach, thanks for uh, the time here this evening, the tip-off show from Mama Lucia's in Bethesda, and to log on aueagles.com for your tickets and for all the schedule information. That'll do it for Mike. I'm Dan. So long.